There's some pretty crazy mechanisms going on in here. How do people invent this stuff? Let's try it out. So I slotted this smaller plate in first, I dipped it into the water, and turned it on. And it's working! It's actually cleaned it! <laughs> wow! What will they think of next? Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're going to take a look at five small and affordable gadgets. Each one of these items are tools that I have never seen before. So let's dig into each one of these items and see if they actually work. Now, if you're new to this channel, you'll know that I have a bad habit of staying up late at night and doing what I call Googling Deep. And Googling Deep is just me getting on websites like Amazon.com and finding tools that I've never seen before just to give them a shot to see if they work. And this can be quite expensive for a small channel like mine, as I have to purchase all these items with my own money. I'm so broke. Ugh. I know. I can't even afford Whole Foods. I have to shop at Trader Joe's. So for this video, I thought I'd make it easy on myself and only spend a maximum of $35 on each item. And I haven't opened up any of these items or tested any of them, which is what I usually do, so you're going to get a real-time reaction. So let's not waste any more time and start talking about our first item. So I have an obsession with tape measures. Found this in the bathroom the other day. What, what, what's going on there? Um, I was measuring stuff. So much so that I recently did a video where I took a deep dive into tape measures and took a look at many of the features that are available on modern tape measures. And at last count, I had 28 of these. And the reason I have so many is not because I'm some sort of weirdo that doesn't have any hobbies. This is the gentle art of philately, otherwise known as stamp collecting. It's because I lose them and misplace them. And in fact, as I've been starting to clean up my barn for my upcoming renovation, I've already found two of these. And I've tried to remedy this by doing things like putting a red X on my tape measure to make it more visible, or even buying the magnetic kind so that I can attach it to my table saw so that it won't get lost. The problem is, I still tend to lose these mid-project. So when I saw this first tool, I thought I'd give it a shot. Let's go check it out. So our first tool today is the Holstrie Magmaster. Let's take a look at this and see how it works. So the design of this tool really couldn't be any more simple. It's got a strong magnet on one side as well as a clip on the other. The clip is meant to be put on something like your belt or the elastic of your pants. And that clip can accommodate a belt as wide as one and three quarters of an inch. And that's quite a hefty belt. Oh yeah, doing the thing, yeah. So how does this thing work? Well, it's really quite ingenious. Well, as you know, every tape measure has some metal in it. Whether it's the case itself, the clip on the back, or the tape measure has a magnet, these things can attach to this device. Even some tape measures that appear to be all plastic typically have a steel blade inside. So are there any tape measures that won't work with this Magmaster? Well, I tested each one of my 28 tape measures and each one attached easily with no problems at all. But how strong is that magnet? Because I have some pretty heavy ones. Well, to answer your question, I'm actually wearing my heaviest tape measure right now. And that thing's on there and isn't going anywhere. And you can really see the power of this magnet as I place my tape measure above the Magmaster. Wow. That is so powerful. <laughs> so if you're looking for an easy way to have your tape measure on you at all times, either on your belt or your work vest, without having to make any alterations to your current tape measure, the Magmaster may be the solution for you. Well, that's a rock solid tool, and I know I'm gonna be using it on upcoming builds. Now that we've taken a look at our first item, let's start to talk about our second item. So our next tool continues with the magnet theme. A man uh, yesterday uh, told me if I buy a car, I must buy one with a magnet. He means a, a car that women will like. Yes, but where you keep this magnet? No, there's no is... magnet. Do you have sausage fingers? Hey, mom, look at my finger. Or butter fingers? Hey, twick or tweet. There you go. Oh. Well, I've got both, and I even have some bad eyes, and that's what this next tool is going to help me out with. So I've always had a problem when finishing up my projects trying to install smaller items like hinges. And that's because I'm typically dealing with smaller screwdrivers or smaller screws and it can be very difficult to keep those screws in line as you go to drive them in. And especially if those screwdrivers aren't magnetized. A magnetized screwdriver can really help you out when you're trying to drive in those screws. 
And that's when I was thinking it would be great if I could find a tool that would actually magnetize many of the screwdrivers that I already have that came without polarization. And that's when I found this next polarization gadget. Let's go check it out. So this next tool is the Klein Tools Magnetizer. Let's see if this actually works. So this little tool looks like an orange key fob for a car. Hey everybody, how's it going? Today this is my key fob collection part one but it's what's inside this fob that really makes it interesting. Inside are some very strong rare earth magnets, and these are what are gonna magnetize our tools. Not only will this magnetize tools, but it will also demagnetize tools. If you wanna magnetize a tool, you stick it into the top hole. If you wanna demagnetize a tool, you'll stick it into one of the three bottom holes. So let's test this out and see if I can get one of my screwdrivers magnetized. So here's my first screwdriver, and as I place it next to those screws, you can see there's no magnetization. However, when I place it into the top hole of this tool, I can place it in there just for a few seconds, pull it out, and now all of a sudden that tool is magnetized. And as you just saw, that only took a couple of seconds. But let's test out the other function of this tool, which is demagnetization. So here I've got my freshly magnetized screwdriver, and now I'm gonna place it into the demagnetized hole. And just like that, it's lost its magnetization. Now one thing you should know as you're either magnetizing or demagnetizing your screwdriver is you can't twist the shaft of that screwdriver as you're placing it into those holes. This will mess with the polarization and you won't get the results you want. So just to show you how easy this process is, I'm gonna go through the whole procedure by magnetizing a screwdriver and then demagnetizing it all in one sitting. So here I have my demagnetized screwdriver and you can see those screws aren't reacting. Now I'll place this screwdriver into the magnetization slot without twisting it or turning it. And I'm just gonna put it in there for a couple of seconds. Now you can see that screwdriver is fully magnetized. Now let's demagnetize it. And I'll do the same thing, only placing it into the demagnetization slot. And I'll just place it in there for a couple of seconds without twisting it. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael. Michael. <laughs> Michael, please. And now you can see that screwdriver is not magnetized. And that's borderline magic in my opinion. Magic, 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 magic. This will allow you to easily magnetize all your screwdrivers so that you don't have to worry about dealing with your sausage fingers. Well, I am thoroughly blown away by these first two gadgets. Both of them work extremely well and I know they're gonna get used in my shop. But we have three more tools to take a look at today. So let's see if we can continue this trend. Before we move on to our third item, I ask you to do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Also, for all the tools we're gonna take a look at today, I'm gonna leave links in the description below so you can go check out these tools for yourself. Now let's move on to our third item. So our first two tools obviously dealt with magnets, and our next tool incorporates magnets into its design. And when I saw this next gadget, it made me think of a common problem that I have over at the table saw. And I'm almost certain you've had this same problem. You go to switch out your table saw blade and everything's going as planned until you hear this sound. And that sound can only mean one thing. You've lost the nut for your arbor in the bowels of your table saw. And I'm sure we're all familiar with how difficult it is to get that nut out. And that's what piqued my interest about this next gadget. So this next tool is the Electbe Finger Magnet. Let me show you how this works. So this silly contraption is the woodworker's version of a finger puppet. These are my little wood shop finger puppets. It slides right onto your finger and it's got a powerful magnet on the very tip of it. On the very bottom of the finger glove, it's got a little pull tab that allows you to slide it onto your finger. Now the question is, is that little magnet strong enough to pull up things like that arbor nut? Well, let's go test it out. Every time I do this, I feel like I'm giving my table saw a prostate exam. Guys seldom need more than this. <laughs> but if you see, I can pull that nut right off with the tip of my finger. Now I'll have to say, this isn't the most powerful magnet in the world, but it does get the job done if you have a piece of metal that's just out of reach. 
Other great solutions for problems like this are your telescoping magnets or your extendable claws so that you can get those arbor nuts. And I'll store this finger glove with those other two items so that I have another solution for those hard to reach items. Well, that takes us through our first three items today and wraps up all the gadgets that we're looking at today that involve magnets. With our fourth item, we're gonna move on to something that Amazon has been recommending to me for quite some time. However, I've never seen it featured on a YouTube video. And I wasn't quite sure exactly how this thing worked, so I thought it might be interesting to take a look at it today. So this next tool is primarily meant for carpenters. However, I do think there's some use for it in the woodworking shop. So let's say you have a piece of wood where you have three holes drilled out that you want to attach to another piece of wood with some carriage bolts. In order to make sure that your holes are perfectly aligned for those carriage bolts, you may need to make some markings on that secondary piece of wood. And this is obviously exaggerated for demonstration purposes, but if I place my piece of wood with the three holes on top of my other piece of wood, you can see that my holes are too small for my pencil to fit in to make any markings. Now I could use something like an awl, but your awl may not be long enough or it may be too thick to fit in those holes. And as I said before, I think this next gadget has more applications in larger carpentry work than it does in smaller woodworking projects, but let's take a look at it. So this next gadget is the Duramark Chalk Shot. Let's open up this bag and see how it works. So this little gadget, as the name implies, shoots a small spray of chalk into smaller holes that you may not be able to get into with a small writing utensil or an awl. If we take a closer look at the Chalk Shot, you can see that there's a little knob on the very side. If we twist this knob so that it fits right into this notch, the tool is now usable. With a tool now in the usable position, let's see if we can mark those three holes. So what I'll do now is I'll place the tip in each one of the three holes and I'll push down on the very top, secreting some chalk into each hole. And if we remove the board, you can see there's three holes that are clearly marked and easy to read. Now, obviously we're going through a two by four here, which is one and a half inches thick, but this thing has the ability to go through two inches. Now, obviously my biggest concern with this tool is it is a consumable. Each one of those cans will eventually run out of chalk. However, they claim that each one of those canisters will do up to 250 bursts. So this is obviously a very specialized tool that I'm only gonna use in very unique situations. It will be nice to have something in my inventory that can get through smaller holes on thicker stock to make my markings without causing any damage. As unlike with an awl or a pencil, this chalk rubs right off when you wanna get rid of it. So a pretty cool little gadget. It's not something that I'm gonna be using in my shop all the time. However, it was nice to see how this thing actually works. Maybe you have a use for it in your shop. Well, that takes us through four items and only one more thing left to take a look at. So let's get into our last item. So the last thing that we're gonna take a look at today, in my opinion, has everything to do with glue ups, but not just glue ups, the squeeze out from glue ups. Hi, Chad Stanton here. If you've done any woodworking at all, you know that removing glue squeeze out is an important part of quality control. Now, if you're lucky to remember to do so, you'll grab a wet rag and you'll wipe down all your glue squeeze out when you're done gluing up your projects. Now, if you didn't remember to wipe off that glue squeeze out, there is a sweet spot. This is when the glue begins to harden but isn't so hard that you can't scrape it off with a paint scraper. And I've got a couple of paint scrapers that I use all the time for this purpose. I've got this newer one with a rubber body that's very comfortable to rub off that glue. I've also got this older one that's a Sears Craftsman that I inherited from my dad, and this one is actually my favorite. But both of these paint scrapers have a metal scraper that can easily mar up your projects once you're done gluing them up. And that's exactly why I took a look into this next tool. This next tool is a scraper, but it doesn't use metal. Let's go check it out. So this next tool is the plastic scraper tool. Let's unbox this and see what it's all about. So here you can see the two scrapers that you get in relation to the size of my normal scrapers. Along with this set, you also get 100 blades included. And these plastic razor blades, just like other razor blades, are double-sided, so you have two surfaces to work with. And these razor blades are very easy to install. You simply slide them under the tabs and they lock into place. And all these blades are single beveled. They're also scratch-free and safe and easy to use. 
They're firm enough where they should be able to remove all that glue squeeze out. However, they're not so sharp they'll cut your hand or mar up your workpiece. So let's give one of these plastic scrapers a try and see how well it works with that glue squeeze out. And here I'll take the scraper and scrape away that glue. And as you can see, it easily removes from that piece of wood. And here you can see how that blade is not strong enough to damage the wood, but is able to remove that glue. And I'm sure this can't be the only application for this unique tool. So if you can figure out any uses for this gadget, let me know in the comments below. Well, that takes us through all five of our unique and affordable woodworking gadgets for today. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It truly does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.